Hey kids, are you guys ready for a story? Yeah! All right, well here we go. This is the third chapter. It's called Working Up the Mountain. Ooh, ooh I like that one. Oh, you do? Okay. Ely, the little magical sprog, and her brother Eloy had been walking up the mountain for more than an hour. Wobblewog was following behind, mumbling all kinds of things they didn't understand. <laughs> the rattle rat rests Raleigh on the <laughs> rocking rack, Wobblewog said. <laughs> By now, Eloy and Ely were ignoring him. His baffled dragon has him so confused, Ely said. They both felt sorry for the old wizard, and they understood. Both of their baffled dragons had often growled and shot fire and scratched them, though for now their baffled dragons were not bothering them at all, which was weird. I don't think we have to climb the mountain, sis, Eloy said. We've been over this a dozen times, Eli said. This Draconis character lives on the mountain, so that's where we have to go. Eloy had Wizard Wobblewog's note in his hand, and he had been reading it over and over. Actually, it doesn't say Draconis lives on the mountain, Eloy explained. He held out the note as he spoke. It says that he lives in the land above the mountains, beyond the clouds of forever. Well, listen. Ely said, raising her voice. I've heard all the old stories and seen all the big picture books. Everyone that wants to find something important has to go on a really hard journey. Nothing is free. It's free! Wobblewog shouted. The outburst frightened them both. It's as free as a bee in a tree, a flea's knee. It's free! <laughs> They ignored him. They continued to walk as they spoke. <laughs> and doesn't it bother you that our baffled dragons have stopped hurting us? Eloy asked Eli. It's almost like they want us to climb this mountain. <laughs> Nothing baffled has ever wanted me to do was good. This made his sister stop and think for a minute. Well, it's probably just because we're getting stronger, Eli said. The more we climb, the stronger we get. The stronger we get, the less baffle can hurt us. Eloy didn't think that was right, but he stayed quiet as they kept walking. They came to one high place on the mountain. Eloy thought it might be the top of the mountain, but as soon as they came to the peak, he saw several more mountain peaks ahead. The note said that all we have to do is believe, Eloy said. Then we can ask for help from Eloy, Eli shouted. I'm tired of hearing it. If you're so sure you're right, then fine. You can try it your way, and I'll try it mine. You can stay right here and believe and ask and do whatever you want, but I'm going to keep climbing the mountain. Believe! Believe, Wobblewog shouted. Don't deceive and grieve the naive. We've no need to heave, weave, leave, or achieve. Just need to believe to receive. Wobblewog was red in the face, and his eyes were as big as the moon. Whatever, Ely said. She turned and continued to march up the mountain. Eloy didn't know what to do. He stood still for a long time and watched the old wizard mumbling to himself. After a while, when Eli's footsteps grew distant, Eloy realized that he didn't want to be left alone on the mountain with weird old Wobblewog. Eloy turned in the direction that Eli had gone and walked. It wasn't long before it started to get dark. Orange beams of light cut across the sky and the sun hid behind the crest of the mountain. It wasn't long before Eloy was completely alone. He kept walking, but in the dark, which scared him. He was putting one foot in front of another like any little sprog knows to do, when all of a sudden he reached out his leg and put it where he expected the ground to be, but the ground wasn't there. Suddenly, he was tumbling through the night air. He was falling, falling, falling. He had stepped off the mountain in the dark. As he fell, he looked up and he saw Baffle on the edge of the cliff from where he fell. Baffle 
was laughing. Ha 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 Baffle was as happy as he could be. Eloy looked below him, and there was nothing but darkness as he fell. But like a picture in his mind, he imagined a tremendous green dragon. The image in his head was like a dream, but more real. He realized that he was seeing a vision of Draconis, the dragon, who lived in the land above the mountain, in the clouds of forever. The dream was so bright that he knew at once that it was true. He believed Draconis was real. He believed Draconis could save him. The wind was rushing by so fast that he couldn't speak. So with the voice inside his head, he talked to Draconis. Draconis, I know that when I hit the ground, I'll be dead. After I die, will you bring me to the land above the mountain into the clouds of forever? I will, and much more. An enormous voice rumbled. It was such a strong call that it seemed like it could split the mountain in two. Whoosh! 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 Giant wings appeared out of the darkness coming down from above. Right before Eloy hit the ground, massive green scaled hands with big talons wrapped around him and saved him from hitting the rocks below. Eloy looked up at the creature that was now carrying him. A huge green dragon, as big as a house, with wings as wide as the sky, was climbing into the moonlit night. After flying to the peak of the mountain, Draconis set Eloy gently on the rocks. He flapped his wings, flew one giant circle in the air before coming to land in front of Eloy. Welcome to my family. Draconis said. Your family? Eloy asked. That's right. All who believe in me for rescue from death become part of my forever family, Draconis said. And I promise to do what you've asked, to take you to the land above the mountains, to the clouds of forever. Oh, wonderful, Eloy said. Let's go. Wait, my child, Draconis said gently. Are there not others who you would like to bring to that grand country with you? Oh, yeah, my sister and the wizard and also my parents and my friends. Eloy would have gone on, but Draconis gave a rich laugh that felt as warm as a hug. Ha, 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 ha. And so you shall, Draconis said. Eloy suddenly realized something had changed. Hey, my baffle dragon is gone, Eloy shouted. Yes, that is another thing that happens when someone joins my forever family, Draconis said. You no longer belong to Baffle. Is he gone forever? Eloy asked. He is still able to reach you. But you can take comfort in this. You are in my family no matter what Baffle does to you. Eloy? Is that you? Eli said from behind him. How did you get to the peak of the mountain so fast? Eloy turned around to find his sister, breathing hard and walking up the mountain in the moonlight. Look! Eloy shouted. I've met him, and I'm part of his... Eloy trailed off when he turned around. Draconis was gone. Eloy was surprised. The grand green dragon had vanished. You've met who? Eli asked. To be continued, find out what happens in the next chapter of Dragon Tales. Um, okay, do you have a question? Yes. Is Draconis' eyes um, red? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what color do you think Draconis' eyes are? Red. You think his eyes are or red? Or maybe yellow with red in the middle. That's kind of cool. What color do you think Draconis' eyes are? Black. Oh, black eyes. That's pretty cool. Or maybe they're green. So, what did Ely think they had to do to get uh, help from Draconis? Climb the mountain. Going down the hill. 
Yeah, go well, go up the hill, yeah. So Ely thought you had to climb the mountain, which was really hard work. Have you ever climbed a mountain? Uh, yeah. You have? Wow, okay. Well, you, you've been up a mountain. You've, you've been to Pike's Peak, which was a really tall mountain. And I went down and all of a second I threw up. Yeah. So climbing a mountain is really hard. What was the only thing that Eloy had to do to become part of Draconis's forever family? Believe. That's right. He just had just to. Just like um, you have to believe to go to heaven. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that. The only thing that, that Eloy had to do to be in Draconis's forever family was to believe in him for rescue from, what was it? Dying. That's right. That's kind of like believing in Jesus for everlasting life. So here, I'm going to read you a verse. He who believes in the Son, that's Jesus, by the way, has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. So what is everlasting life? Here, do you know this one? Life that lasts forever with God. Life that um, lasts forever with God in heaven. Hey, that's great. Yeah, life that lasts forever with God. And so what is the one thing that this verse says we have to do to have everlasting life? Believe in Jesus. That's right. Ailey, is there something you want to add to that? Um, believe in Jesus for eternal life. That's right. Yeah, so the thing that we're believing in Jesus for is so that we can get everlasting life. So even though there are people who think you have to work really hard to get everlasting life, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that we have it by just believing in Jesus for it. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, yeah. What do you think might happen in the next chapter? Uh, Eloy would tell Eli who he met. Hey, that's a good idea. And, what do you um, think might happen in the next chapter? Um, Eloy um, will fall in a big hole again. <laughs> you never know. He might trip off a big hole. Gotta go, Buffalo. Out the door, dinosaur. Well, we got a scat, Alley Cat. Bye! Bye.